Hello there and welcome to a windy but thankfully dry dog walk and uh, we're going to start this particular video today with an update on one of my art projects. You know the uh, May Parade where I'm making all these figures from an imaginary folk festival? Well it must be said the last figure I did I wasn't very happy with it. So here's what I did. Do you know, I've done quite a few figures now for this May Parade thing, and I've been very pleased with all of them. And it's been a learning experience. The sculptures have got better with each one I've done. But the last one I did, the Turney horse, the Obvious, I wasn't pleased with that one. And every time I looked at it, I thought, I don't like it. I think the problem is that, first of all, it was too small. All the figures are about one twelfth scale. And this one looked way too small for what it was. So it looked like it was actually a child under the costume. So I decided I'm going to redo it. So I took the original sculpture and I pulled it apart. First thing I did was I extended the height of the actual tourney horse. What I did was um, I took the head off the top, took off the actual body and then got loads of stickers, cut them into strips and then started building them into this um, raggedy sort of surround, which actually increased the height by about an inch and a half, three centimeters maybe. Um, I haven't quite finished it yet. I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished because one that's all coated in PVA and then painted, it'll look fine. The next thing I did was extend the height of the actual person underneath. So I got an old toilet roll and a stick, glued it on there. So now what happens is this. And if I show it in scale here with one of the other figures, this is Crimpy Jack the Pasty King. If I show it now, it's the right sort of size. It looks like there is an adult underneath the turny horse, especially when I put the little head thing on top. So yes, I think this is going to work. So we go, coat the PVA. Just to seal it all round, then we'll paint it. I then made an armature for the new headpiece uh, out of foil and masking tape, and then sculpted a new face over the top. And here's all the finished pieces. I made a tail to hang on the back. This is the head with the sculpted features on one side and I put a sad face on the other side and reuse the old mouth from the previous turning horse and here's the body now it's just a matter of putting it all together and here it is the finished item I have to say I am a hundred percent two hundred percent happier with this than I was with the original it's the right height it's the right scale with all the other figures I like the fact it's got more detail with the tail and the sort of um, raggedy scales over the outside which very much mirrors some real tourney horses like the the minehead osses uh, in Somerset and uh, yeah very pleased it was worth redoing well there you are that's your update uh, more figures on the horizon I've had a few more ideas for figures to join the parade and uh, now let's get back to a normal dog walk Wow, would you look at that on this young oak, one tiny little stick coming out from the tree, the four galls on it, extraordinary. Well, the people who manage the fields here have been doing a bit of cutting back to stop all the uh, bracken and the brambles encroaching onto the actual grass. And of course, what happens whenever they cut things back is we see the, uh, the annual crop of dog poo bags where inconsiderate twonks pick up their dog poo and then lob it into the middle of these uh, areas over here where we've got all the, the bracken and brambles see what i don't get is you've done the worst bit you've picked up the poo that's the awful bit and you've sealed it in a bag so now you can't smell it you can't see it you can't feel it and you're holding it by the handles so it's not even if you're being subjected to the sort of nasty warmth of it through the bag so why is it so hard to carry it five ten minutes until you come to a poo bin We've got poo bins at every entrance to these fields. There's really no excuse of chucking them into bushes or hanging them from a tree. There really isn't. I mean, if you're that squeamish about it, then don't pick it up at all. Just kick it into a hedge or use a stick to flick it into a hedge or something where it'll rot down and do some good. I mean, that's got to be better than sticking it in a plastic bag and then hanging it in a tree or sending it off to a rubbish dump where it's going to take forever to rot down and decompose because it's plastics, you know. I mean, dog poo, even dog poo is good fertiliser. I mean, if 
you know, particularly if your dog's being fed on hard food like my dog is, my pug only ever eats biscuit. Now it's flavoured with meat juices, but there's no real meat in it. So it's just all vegetable matter. It's all going to rot down and be good for the environment. At least do that instead of sticking it in a bag and then hanging it in a freaking tree. It's the most ignorant, lazy and stupid behaviour. Stop doing it, you people. Well, there you go. That's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining me. Incidentally, if you are someone, particularly in the UK, who's got access to Talking Pictures TV, do check out Monday nights um, because the old Jack Hargreaves shows uh, Old Country uh, and uh, Out of Town are starting to be shown on Talking Pictures TV. And I have to say, I have been likened to him a couple of times, which I take as a massive compliment. I mean, there is no way I have even a, a hundredth of the knowledge that man had. But if you're interested in seeing how the countryside used to be managed, if you're interested in seeing how farming used to be done, if you just want a, a good dose of nostalgia for the 1970s and the 80s, do tune in and watch. You have to say, I watched the first one, which was on Monday, and thoroughly enjoyed it. it brought back all sorts of memories of my childhood, sitting watching the programme, um, you know, with my dad and occasionally with my granddad. They would sit there and make notes or they'd sit there and go well he's not talking sense that ain't what i do boy that ain't what happened around here so uh yeah always nice to have you a bit like you know someone watching football and being an armchair football pundit yeah my my family all come from a farming background and they were very much uh countryside or countrymen pundits and were keen to point out what they do in the same circumstances but yeah happy days happy days Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. If you care to join me, toodle pip.